So today I'm going to make some sauerkraut using some red cabbage. So let's give that a go and see how we get on. So all you need for this is really obviously your red cabbage. I've got this fine kosher salt. Got all got that from Amazon. I'll leave the links in the description. Also got these mason jars from Amazon. You get the weights and you get the release valve with them. I'll show you a bit closer. And then you get a separate lid as well. You get little weights to go with them to weigh down your stuff. And then once you've finished fermenting, you get a lid to close them up. So let's give that. A, let's give this a go. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove a couple of these older outer leaves. They're a bit nasty. This has been in the fridge. It's a bit cold. Trying to get as fresh or organic as you can get, but I'm not sure if we got this was organic or not. But So that's a few out of these removed. Move this salt out of the way. Oh, that's loud. So I just want to take a couple of big out of these and save them. You'll see why later. If I can get some big out of these. Oh, that's it for one. I'll do for two. I'll save them for later. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just weigh my cabbage. My weighing scales will work. There we go. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to weigh my cabbage to see how much cabbage I've got. What have I got? 1,175 grams. So we want about, probably about 2%, between 2 and 2.5% two and salt. So I would say that was moved to decimal point, that's 11, we'll say 12 grams. We'll weigh out 24 grams. So it's just over 2%, between 2 and 2.5% two and of salt to your cabbage. So I'm going to do 24 grams of salt. So here's my salt. Home cure and salt, I got this from Amazon. You can use any salt but Try to get one that's not um, got other ingredients. Like I wouldn't use table salt. Just try to get ingredients pure salt. So what we want is 24 grams of salt. Oh dear, Not too much now. 24 has that spot on. So we can see that. 24 grams. All right, so now we've got our cabbage and our salt weighed out. Got our salt there. Now we're going to get chopping. It's the hard bit. You've got to try and cut it as small as possible. If you've got a mandolin, you can use mandolin to chop this up, grate it, sort of thing. But unfortunately, I haven't got one. I'm going to have to invest in one, I think. Start off by cutting quarters. Put that leaf aside. <coughs> Not very good quarters there. <laughs> then just cut this core out. You can use that. I think I will use that actually, but you have to cut it really small. Have a better core out. So basically what we're going to do is just cut this up really finely. Smaller than fine as we can get. Well, it depends on your taste, really, I suppose. So I'll cut thin strips. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Lovely colour it's got red cabbage. Sauerkraut you make with white cabbage is not not nearly as pretty, I don't think. Probably could have done that a bit thinner. Move the cores out of the way. 
So just cut all this up, thin as you want it. And then we're gonna add it to our bowl and salt it. So here's all my red carrot chopped up. So what I'm doing now, is add it to, to my bowl. Maybe spring a bit of salt on it and start working. A bit more salt, I think. This is going to draw out all the moisture. Start the fermentation process. More salt. So there's the last of our salt going in. And our cabbage. So just squash that down a little bit. And mix the salt in. I can feel it already getting damp. It's drawing the water out of the cabbage. Oh, I can see it's already getting wet. Crunch it together, the salt and the water and the cabbage. You can see it getting really, isn't that beautiful? So what I'm gonna do now is just leave this for about an hour or so. Make sure I've got all that salt out there. Just cover it up, I'll leave it for an hour and so let the salt do its work. So we're going to come back to that in about an hour. So it's been about an hour now. Let's see how we're getting on. Oh, you can see the water in it. Just give it a little scrub. Oh yes, yeah, it's soaking wet. Salt's done its job. You can see how on my hands how wet that is. Right, let's start packing it into the jars then. Could be a bit bigger because my hands are a bit big to go in these jars, but. I need one of them funnels. A rolling pin to squash them down. Pack them in tightly. You can see that there's a water coming out. Just pack it down nice and tightly. Squash this up a bit. Trying to get some more water out of it. Do for that jar for a minute, see how much we've got to go in the other jar. Lovely. You can see in the bottom of the bowl is all the water to come out of it. Quite enough for two jars there. Just pour a drop of that in there. Drop that in there. More in that one because it's got more in it. Right, now for our leaves to go up. What we're going to do, just put a bit on the top of each one and then put our weight on. You can see there's water in there but I think it just needs a little bit more water. So what I might do is just top that up with a little bit of water. So what I've done, I've just put them in a bowl in case they overflow a little bit. I'm just going to add a little drop of water just to top them up a little bit. Little one under the water there, same with that one. Just a little bit of water. That's it, so they stay under the water. So you've got to make sure, one thing you've got to do is make sure whatever you're fermenting is under the water so that you can see that. So that no uh, mold or fungus can grow on them. So just, these are my airtight lids. Look, all come in a set. We'll put a link in the description. Let's the air if it does. Let's air out or not. Let's like because they will bubble and carbon monoxide. Let's the pressure out of them. Also stops the mouldy air from getting in and infecting it. One more thing I'm going to do, I'll just show you. I've got these test strips, so I'm going to just give one of them a little test actually before we start, and then we can test it in about seven to ten days. Ten, maybe ten to 
14 days, depends. I'll just take a little drop of the water out, just to test the pH of it. If I can get it out of this, get the weight out of this. Clean spoon. And show you roughly what the pH is of the water is now, compared to when we uh, test it in the future. So, what does that say? To me that looks like 7. So we need it between below below 4, but probably about 3.5. So to me that looks like 7 at the moment. You can see that properly, if I hold it upright. <laughs> looks like 7 to me, so we probably want it to be a bit more orangey colour, which we will do in about 10 to 14 days. And I'll come back to you in about 10 to 14 days, I'll let you know when I come back. So, I'll come back when it's cooked, or fermented I should say. Okay, it's been about two weeks since we uh, fermented this red cabbage, or red sauerkraut if you want to call it that. I took a little, took a little bit out there for tasting, but I'm just going to give it a little test pH in it. Just trying to get a bit of this water out. Should be enough, I think. Will it be enough? Let's hold that there for a second. Just dip the test the stick in. Oh, I've got about two there, I think. Oh dear. I've got two? Yeah. Too thick. Mop up a bit of that water. I've got another electronic tester coming which I'm looking forward to get because I do want to ferment some more stuff. Right, let's see if we can guess. That looks like it's free to me. As I previously said, but as long as it's below four and a half, I think, is the actual number. That's between three and four. So that's probably free actually. So that's been fermenting for two weeks. So we give the other one a little test just in case. All right, let's make sure I only got one test strip this time. Whoops. Fingers and thumbs trying to do this and film at the same time. Not the easiest. Yeah, that looks like a three to me. Between three and four anyway. We can see that, it's like very similar to both. Both the same sort of colour. So, I think we're good to give it a taste anyway. Let's just give this a little taste. Mmm, very sour. Now I think that's two weeks is just enough time for this. As you can hear, it's still got a little bit of a crunch, which is nice. Mmm. Now yeah, I think they go lovely in, lovely in the sandwich. Nice meat sandwich into a vegetable. All right, it was really nice that too. I'm thinking of fermenting some onions or some other stuff, so let me know in the comments what you'd like me to see me ferment next. You can leave these between one and four weeks, but this is two weeks and this tastes about right for me because I don't like too sour, but full of prebiotics and probiotics. Really good for your gut health and your microbiome. So why not give it a go? Hope that was interesting and thanks for watching.